a little loose. Still kind of sucks. But I guess it's not as bad, right? Okay, so, we're in the daytime. Uh, I took the fan off, and uh, it seems to run better. It got me through a day. I've driven this thing about 100 miles. Uh, if you'll notice down here, looks like there's some black shavings or something. It's like weird. It's all over my alternator too. It's probably from the pulley rubbing against the housing or something like that. It made a very uh, interesting noise every time you revved it. Very squeaky and squealy. So um, I've driven 100 miles and the temperature didn't seem to be a problem. I had slight temperature creep at stoplights, but I still don't even get up to operating temperature, even with that in place. So I'm going to say forget the fan and bypass it. So I'm going to take my belt and go straightly from the harmonic balancer to the alternator, because right now it's going harmonic balancer, fan, and then down the alternator. I'm going to go past that. Hopefully by tightening it a little bit, um, I don't have too much slippage with the balancer. Um, I measured the, the belt, I took a string and wrapped around everything with the new setup, and I came out to about 84 inches. And if you search that uh, into like some kind of part catalog and figure out what kind of car uses an 84 inch belt, then you can uh, get one from your local hardware store. So I found out, or auto parts store, I'm sorry, I found out a 2005 Honda Element takes an 84 inch belt, or a uh, six ribbed 2135 millimeter belt, something like that. And here it is. This is a real cheap belt. Uh, if you notice, 6 PK for the 6 ribs, and then 2135 is the total inside uh, diameter in millimeters. So that's what I need. So I'm going to see if that fits. Hopefully it does. Alright, after sufficiently loosening up the power steering pump, um, I took the belt off and I was looking. This is a Goodyear Gatorback. These are supposed to be like really good belts. And uh, the wear seems pretty decent, but if you look here, got a crack. Down here we got a crack. And they're all like horizontal, like they go from side to side, which is strange. And uh, if you'll notice, this pulley right here looks pretty glazed. Um, after that 100 mile drive, it looks like the bearing seized up. So next time I started it, she don't turn, she don't wiggle, she don't do anything. So it's a real good thing I decided I was going to bypass this instead of driving on it today because it doesn't drive anymore. But anyway, other pulleys seem to spin freely. Relatively little wobble or play. So everything seems good. Besides that fan pulley that doesn't work anymore. So, uh, yeah, we're going to see if that new belt fits on there. Hopefully I uh, measured correctly. Here's the test fit of the new belt. Fits on there. Uh, and there's a little bit of slack. Uh, I haven't started tightening it yet, but I got the belt on there and it seems to fit mildly well. And uh, there's the, uh, the bypass down there that you can see. Bring it downstairs. <sighs> So that's what the new bypass is going to look like. A lot of people say that they've had problems with their alternator bracket getting in the way, but uh, I see no such issue. Because if you come down here, plenty of room, ain't nothing there. So I should be in the clear. Now to tighten this up and see if I can pick up the slack. All right, here we are, final fitment. As you notice, there's no slack anymore, nice and tight. Not a lot of deflection in the belt. And uh, if you look over here, we still got uh, a decent amount of tightening that we can do. All right, so I guess the last thing to do now is to start this thing up. See what it sounds like with uh, a little less resistance. Everybody loves a startup, don't they? We have alternator, so that means the belt's driving. Oh, 
Looking good. I dig it. And everything still spins in the same direction as well. So, uh, that's good. I don't know if that's wobbly or not. Hopefully not. Cool. Now, obviously, um, you're missing something now. Your mechanical fan. So, um, now would be a lovely time to take a, advantage of this large gap here for a mechanical fan. Or, uh, I'm sorry, an electric fan, so you could run dual electrics. Uh, I took my accessory fan out so I could tighten up the power steering pump, because that's a pain in the ass to do without that in the way. So, if you want it, the uh, radiator that I have has uh, dual supports. So if you wanted to go to a junkyard, get yourself one of these bad boys. And uh, walk around with it for a little. Well, that's a much bigger gap. All right, well, first off, the actual fan itself, the pulley's getting in the way. But I'm sure there's plenty of room in there, and I have slots that I could put two fans in maybe if I wanted. Now, since I have an overcooling problem, my Jeep never gets to temperature. Only time I even see regular running temperature is when I'm really using it off-road pretty good. Uh, I'm going to leave it without uh, a main fan, but I'm still going to leave the accessory fan in. So that'll still kick on in absolute necessary uh, circumstances. So, I guess the last thing I can do is take off that pulley and show you what it looks like now that it's seized. Okay, bolts are off. Pulley comes out nice and neat. So if we look at the pulley, you notice the uh, the outer edge is uh, worn down a little bit, not much. Outside is very shiny and glazed, which was caused by oh look you can see perfectly right where the belt started and ended. So all that brown crap is probably a uh, belt. That's good to know. Thought it was like a plastic at first, but okay yeah shiny belt like this that means that uh pulley seized because if you look over here this is smooth and not nearly as shiny. So you can see the difference. So if you got a belt or a pulley that looks like that, now you know why. Major slippage. So if you come down here, this is the um, the fan, the mechanical fan hub bearing. So it's got four studs on there and a little ding or do. And then if you look towards the back, come on. You can kind of see where the shaft and everything sits inside this whole uh, assembly. So I guess the pulley must have been riding against maybe that section of uh thing there. Doesn't look like much else. Not too much else down there. So I don't know if you can see anything better from down there. Um, now, if you wanted to replace this with another mechanical fan bearing, first off, this is a non-replaceable part, technically, like there is no mechanical fan bearing. Uh, you could try and press it out if you like. I've heard uh, numerous stories of people cracking their housing uh, trying to do that. So I'm not going to try that. Um, and this is a perfect time, absolutely perfect time, to uh, upgrade to an, a dual electric. So if this gives out, you have two options. Fix it which means buying this whole bracket. Um, I'll show you a picture, but like, it sits on this whole thing. This is a whole entire bracket that holds up the, uh, the alternator, or I'm sorry, the uh, AC compressor, the idler pulley, and the mechanical fan bearing. I'll, I'll show you a, a picture of what it looks like outside. And that mounts to the, uh, the side of the engine. So uh, yeah, you, uh, you can go to a junkyard or dealer. Dealer will charge you a phenomenal amount, and a junkyard will cost you next to nothing, but it might be in questionable shape. Maybe you had to go through the work of taking all that crap off to replace it. Or, second option, dual electric. Where you buy another electric fan right here, that's your primary fan, and then the uh, accessory fan can still do its air, uh, air conditioner job, as well as uh, protection from overheating. If you were curious about how uh, the stud removal goes, 
um, you take the two nuts, you, you thread the one nut on just about all the way, and then the second nut uh, on top of that. You take two wrenches, in this case uh, I have two half inches, uh, tighten them together so that they're locked, and then all you do is loosen them back up. But, um, what you're doing is going like this, and if you notice, if I can get you in a good angle, now the stud's turning instead of the nuts. Locking the nuts together holds them on the, uh, the shaft, so then you can just sit here, loosen it up, and then there you go, the studs come off. And then to take a, to take that apart, the one that comes off fine, uh, the other one you're going to have to use a vice grip to hold this part so that you can get the nut off the uh, shaft. So there you go. Stud removal 101. Yeah, for cheap trick. And with the studs removed, it seems like we still have slight clearance problems. Uh, mechanical fan still won't fit because that bearing sticks out a little bit. Just barely. It's not exactly flush, but it doesn't... You, you'd have clearance issues. So you'd have to uh, grind that off, cut it off, remove it, something. So, in case you're actually curious, you will have uh, some more work to do besides just removing those studs. So, all right, we're done here. Good luck.